What's up, y'all? You know, what I got to say, a lot of you women are probably not going to like. So you might want to just scroll past right now. There are so many men out there that are living in pain and agony and so much hurt right now. And you know the reason why? You. Me. So many times women overlook the feelings of men. And I'm going to say this because I can speak to it. And especially black men. I'm going to say 75 to 80 percent of men walk around hurt all the time. And for black men, it's probably about 95 percent walk around in hurt and pain and agony. Suffering every single day. Yet they get up because they have to. They get up. Because they have to make sure things happen. They live uh, being unworthy. Yet they have nowhere to turn to. So they don't have a choice but to suck it up and keep going. There, more, than, more often than not, there are no safe places for them to go to. Even mentally. They've been through so much trauma and drama that they don't even have a safe space to think to get through the problems and get through the healing inside of their own head. So when you try to come at them with negativity and with aggression, and, and especially when they're going through something and they shut down and they don't want to hug, they don't want to kiss, they don't want to sleep by you. You got to give them that space because you don't have the capacity to get him through it. He has to once again get himself through it. Give him space. Gotta give him time. It doesn't always have to be another woman. And stop with that accusation. They live feeling looked over, unwanted, undesirable, abandoned, like no one cares about them. No, like no one cares about their feelings. Like their emotions don't matter. Like their heartbreak doesn't matter. Like what they do doesn't matter. They feel like they're that like the women that they do take care of and the families that they do take care of, they feel, and the kids that they, that they do take care of, they feel like they're uh, uh, so ungrateful for what the work that they do put in. And it's sad. They feel unwanted. Why? Why do you think that is? They don't have space. They don't have space to grieve. They don't have space to heal. They don't have spaces to vent. And it's sad because they are the strength of what makes things happen. And let me just say this, ladies, you have to understand that when you get in your little feelings and you start acting all emotional and everything and you say certain things to him, you know you can't get that back. You say things to tear him down. You say things to belittle him. You say things to degrade him. You say things that, that you know are going to take him out. You go, you literally go for the juggler, right? But you can't get that back. And now you sit up here begging him to come back. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. I did me. Yes, you did. You meant it when you said it. Learn how to have some self-control and some self-discipline with your mouth. Use your tongue in better ways. Girl, get the f*** out of here. And let me just say this. If y'all are choosing to be in a committed connection and y'all are cohabitating, Make sure that both names are on the list because what happens is, ladies, you will sit up there and you will know that his name ain't on the list, but he's been paying rent for months or for years. And what happens is you get in your little funky ass feelings and you get in your little funky ass ways and you get in, into your little funky ass realms of, of, and ways of thinking. And what happens is you sit up there and you put them out. And what happens is, y'all know what, y'all know how it happens. You put them out. Cause you done got in your feelings, you done got mad, you done got pissed off with something he said or something he did or, or, or you just done flew, flew off the handle. And what happens is you feel that you have the upper hand because his name ain't on the lease. Make sure that both names are on the lease if y'all choosing to cohabitate because ladies, you can't keep on putting this man out because what happens is you sit up there and do that and then you beg him to come back. But he don't want to come back now because you done lost his trust. Because if you if he can't trust you to help him keep a roof over his head, especially when he's paying bills, then he can't trust you about other things. Some of y'all have to understand this one. The only reason why she's there is because she's secure 
in having a place to stay. She's secure in having a home. You keep on wondering why she treats you this way. It's because she does not want to be there. But the simple fact is, is that you are her security blanket. You make her secure. You make sure she has a roof over her head. You provide everything that she needs. So therefore, yes, she's there with you physically, but she's not there with you emotionally and psychologically because she's already checked out. She don't want to be with you. She simply needs a place to stay. Stop doing that. Get the fuck out of here. Another thing, stop blaming that man for shit that you created. You so nonchalant, you so toxic in your behavior and the way you respond to people and the way you talk to people. And so you create situations and you get yourself into shit that you don't like, but then you point the finger at him. No, nah, girl, learn how to change your ways. Get the fuck out of here. And let me just say this. Until she is ready to change, she is not going to change. Until she sets aside her pride and her ego, she's not going to change. Until she wants to level up and do better for herself and those around her, including you as her person, as her man, as her spouse, she is not going to change. The ones that want to change for the better will change for the better. If they don't, then they're going to keep on going around the same mountain, the same circle, and they're going to lose a good man. Get the fuck out of here. See, ladies, this is the thing that you have to realize. A lot of you want the committed relationship, the committed connection. You want that title of wife. You want that title of fiance. You want that title of, oh, I'm engaged. Oh, I'm married. But at the end of the day, you are not ready and willing to do the work. You're not ready and willing to do the work within the relationship because you have not yet done the work on yourself. Go get the fuck out of here. Girl, have you ever just sat your ass down and got a piece of paper or started to journal and be like, what is it that I need to fix? What is it that I need to do to create betterment within myself? What is it that I need to look at from my childhood, adolescent years, or from a previous partner that I've carried into this connection that I'm pointing the finger at and blaming this man for? What is it that I need to fix about myself? Have y'all ever done that? Because I promise you, when you start to do the work, when you start to do the inner work, you will be better in that connection with your person. But the more you avoid yourself, the more your partner is going to avoid you. Have a good day. And guys, let me just say this. Some of y'all are addicted to women. Not just one woman, but y'all are addicted to multiple women. You can have everything in one woman and you will still have to look on the outside to bring in other women because you're addicted to women. And some of y'all are in denial about this. You, you, you say that you're not a womanizer, but on the other hand, you got multiple women. And on the top of that, you hide them all from each other. If you real about it, then just be truthful about it. Stop lying. And let me just add this. What y'all are addicted to is the outside appearance of the woman, even though she's trash on the inside. Get the fuck out of here. Let me tell you something. You can't continue to tell this man that you love him and that you care about him and that you value him and, and, and tell him that you know his worth when you don't ask him what makes him happy. You're not attentive to his needs. You don't pay attention to what he likes and go out and purchase something for him or send him a surprise gift or show up at work and top him off. God forbid on his lunch just because, you know, just because you want to be that person to him. There are so many things that you can do for him, yet you sit up here and you look at him and you judge him and you criticize him for the things that you feel like he's not, but you don't give him credit for the things that he already is. So when your person, when your man leaves, when he goes to find somebody else, or when he gets tired of you, don't say that you did all you could because you neglected him. He neglected his wants and his needs. Ladies, I have a question. If a man is supposed to pay for everything and everything's supposed to come out of his bank account and his pockets, what the fuck are you doing with your money? Go get the fuck out. So you want him to have patience and understanding when it comes to you, but when it comes to him, you give him strife. You don't listen. You complain. You try to use what he's saying and turn it back around like it's his fault, knowing damn well you needed to take responsibility for yourself. But yet you want to blame him. You don't want to apologize, but yet you were the one that was wrong. Go get the fuck. You know, another thing that's weird to me is the fact that, ladies, y'all will sit up there and you will accuse this man of stepping out. You will accuse him of doing stuff. 
you will accuse him of being with a woman, even though he may be out with the boys. They may be out at an event. They may be out having a drink. They may be out playing golf. They may be out bowling. They may be out fishing. But you accuse this man time and time and time and time again. But then this man ain't even doing nothing. So what do you say to the fact that you may have driven him to step out of the connection? No, you don't control what he does, right? No, you can't. You may not be able to control the actions that he takes. But what do you expect him to do when you are constantly accusing this man of stepping out? So what if he makes it a prophecy and actually does it? Some of y'all have to understand this one. The only reason why she's there is because she's secure in having a place to stay. She's secure in having a home. You keep on wondering why she treats you this way. It's because she does not want to be there. But the simple fact is, is that you are her security blanket. You make her secure. You make sure she has a roof over her head. You provide everything that she needs. So therefore, yes, she's there with you physically, but she's not there with you emotionally and psychologically because she's already checked out. She don't want to be with you. She simply needs a place to stay. Stop doing that. She get the fuck out of here. And another thing. How is it that you want this man to pay for everything, but you don't do shit for him? You won't lay down with him. You're not there for him emotionally. You don't bring shit to the table, but heartache and complaining and bitterness. Like, like, but you want him to pay for everything. Girl, he don't even want to be dealing with you half the time. The clock is ticking. Got here. Let me just let you know this. Bum ass women hate when you start to work on yourself because they can no longer manipulate you. They can no longer control you. They can no longer uh, use uh, the power of the P on you. Guys, the more you work on yourself, the more she's going to get frustrated. I promise you, the more she's going to say you acting funny or you acting weird. The more you work on yourself, the more she's going to start to try and manipulate you and try to control you. This, this, this is... It is so uh, prevalent nowadays when they can't control you, when they can't use and abuse you and they can't manipulate you, then they know they've lost. So, guys, do more work on yourself. And the ones that aren't supposed to be there, those little bum bitches, they're going to fall off the fuck out of here. How is it that y'all act like prostitutes, but then you say you want a good man? You say you want a good man, but then you want a man to pay for everything. He got to treat you a certain way and you and you don't have to do anything for him. How is it that you call yourself a woman and you say you want a good man, but yet in your actions, you act like a prostitute? Get the fuck out of here. I'm sleepy. I'm tired. I got cramps. I got a headache. My back hurt. The kids had me up all day. I didn't get enough sleep last night. I worked eight hours. I had to stand up on my feet. I don't feel like taking a shower. I don't feel like doing nothing. Then stop signing up for men then. Stop signing up for relationships or commitments that you're not ready for. Because if you committed to this man, you're supposed to be the sole provider of this man. He's the only, that he, you're the only one he can lay down with. Then what do you expect him to do? Fuck out of here. And you sit up here and wonder why this man can't tell you the truth. He's already told you the truth and you used it against him. He's already told you the truth and you couldn't handle it. He's already told you the truth and opened up to you about stuff. And you went back and told everybody else. So stop asking why he don't tell you the truth. You already know the answer. It's because you always run in your mouth and it's because you don't believe him. And you have trust. Get the fuck What's up? What's up, y'all? You know what I'm realizing is that a lot of people don't have good work ethic. Like me, like... Y'all, y'all see, like I, I, I wake up creating, I go to sleep creating, like that's what I do. When you're building something and you have the grace and space on it, then you utilize that time, right? But what I'm, what I'm learning is that a lot of people that say they want to work with me, they have no work ethic. They have none to very little work ethic. Like I have to have people on my team that are about that. Like I have had merch people. Who have said, oh yes, I could do it. And then they dropped the ball. I'm talking about three or four or five people. They dropped the ball. Um, I have had people say that they want to, you know, put some stuff together. Boom, they dropped the ball. Um, so this is the thing, like, 
a lot of y'all, what y'all need to understand is that if you want to get somewhere, then you have to have good work ethic. You got to show up when you're supposed to show up. If you can't show up when you're supposed to show up, then you need to communicate that and, and stop giving all this lip service. Oh yeah, we could do this and this and that. Oh, I could do. No, you can't. If, if you can't do it, then don't sit up there and say that you can. But yeah, it's a lot of lip service out here. And people ask me, well, why do you want to meet in person? Or why do you want to FaceTime? Why do you want to Zoom? It's because I need to be looking at you. Because whatever I don't pick up when I'm on the phone, whenever I don't pick up, especially when I'm on the phone, I'm going to pick it up by looking into your eyes. Y'all stop, stop, stop the bullshit. Like for real, like if you can't do something, then don't volunteer for it. Um, And, and have some good work ethic, like. I, I, I really do this. Y'all see me every single day. Like my work ethic is impeccable. Okay. So I can't have people who half ass shit on my team. Have a good day. And another thing, stop complaining. It's like my, oh, it's too salty. Oh, it's too thick. How about you feed him healthier foods? And ladies, let me fill you in on something because a lot of y'all either on the verge of losing a good man, have lost a good man or, or, or listen, he about to be out the door, right? And, and it's because you, you, you accuse him of so much. You accuse him of cheating. You accuse him of entertaining people. You accuse him of stepping out. Do you know this man is at work? Do you know this man is really spending time with the boys? Do you know this man is really taking the long way home because he don't want to have to come home and deal with your shit and listen to your crap? Ladies, learn how to get yourself a hobby. Learn how to shut your mouth sometime. Learn how to make sure that your spirit and, and, and your thoughts are intact. Make sure your mindset is intact. How about you figure out what these what these next business ventures are? Figure out how you can expand on your and his portfolio. Like, it's ridiculous, ladies. You guys sit up here and be talking about this man is cheating and he's entertaining other women. And literally, all he is out doing is getting a peace of mind or providing for your ass. Go get the fuck.